What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Now, today, we are back here with another Discord Cricket Memes episode here on this Friday. So, firstly, a happy weekend to everyone. We're here with episode number... Oh, good Lord. 197. So we're, I think we're three away now here from the double ton. It's going to be inspirational scenes. I'm still trying to chase my dad's record of 330. No, th what, what did he score at the SCG? Was it 339, 329? Something like that. I'll, I'll figure it out when I do edit the video. But hey, we're going to jump straight into this one. There's plenty of good cricket going on. Two-day test matches, teams getting rolled out, losing six wickets and not making a single run. So... Plenty of good stuff happening. Let's talk about it. Let's let's have a laugh. Jamal versus Baba in this Australian series. So you've got Pakistani youngster, Amir Jamal, 125 runs plus 12 wickets. He's obviously been their best. And then you've got, I was going to say the captain, but no, he's not. Uh, number one batsman, 103 runs. So yes, it's rough going for the man Bob's ears, and it? it's, re it's really tough. But, you know, he's going to keep persevering, keep trying, and... Um, you know, he might get to Shan Masood's level one day, but you know, there, there's level to it, um, unfortunately. What just happened? I, I can't really say what happened. It was just genuine carnage, genuine filth. Like, I, I, I just, I mean, seeing South Africa get rolled at day one for under 60 was like, okay, that's that's pretty messed up. You know, India were then 153 for four, expecting that they just go on and honestly bury this game, bat South Africa out of it. They were in such a good spot um, and then just said, all right, we're going to make it a fair contest now. Let's have some fun. Quick game's a good game. We all want to hit the pub after this. So let's, let's fucking finish this and... Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty inspirational, of course. That KL Rahul dismissal was... Yeah, that was one to... Yeah, not watch ever again. I mean, that was a tough dismissal. A few of those dismissals from both teams were so bad. Like, don't get me wrong, there was some incredible amazing bowling. I'm hopefully going to review the game after I um, do this memes episode, but there was some amazing bowling. Gee whiz, there were some average shots at times, but that's okay. All of us after the dramatic collapse. I, seriously, like I didn't even know what was going on. Like I had it because I had my, my laptop screen, which had a game of cricket going on with India, South Africa test match. And then on my TV, I had the, the Big Bash League or after the test match of Australia v Pakistan. So I had cricket going everywhere. I literally turned around for like three minutes to go out, get a drink, come back in and watch more cricket. And, and India had lost about four wickets on the trot. I'm thinking, what happened? <laughs> Is this a T10 game? What's going on, fellas? Summed up right, rightly right here. Yeah, um, just doing a couple of tumbles down the stairs. That's essentially how India went. I mean, other than Kohli in that first innings, I just, it's hard to put into words. Siraj's point of view, the man, he witnessed, I mean, he visioned Sri Lanka Asia Cup team right there. And said, I'm going to knock you over for 50, mate. Isn't it crazy how Siraj just randomly has these massive games of six-wicket hauls? Like, how many sixfers does that man have? It's, it's got to be like three at least. Uh, for the first time in history, a team lost the last six wickets without scoring. It is KL while going back to the pavilion. He just kept turning his head and seeing all these teammates come up back behind him. It's actually like, you just don't see things like that in test cricket, like let alone cricket for that matter. Like if it's in a big, oh, a big bash game, but if it's in a T20 game, you, you kind of accept it because they're trying to make runs. But when it's in test cricket and you've got a lead of, look at this, you've got a lead of 98. The last thing you want to do is just throw your wickets away and bring South Africa back into the game. They did exactly that. Like, perfect chance just to bury them and finish them off. But no, like, that's what I'm saying. Went to go take a piss. Or as the man Ravi Shrashri said, went to go take a dump. Come back. And it's all over. <laughs> South Africa are back into bat. India lose. Six wickets without scoring a single run. It happened for the first time in almost 150 years of test cricket history. So... It's not great, like, 
but at least you didn't get bowled out for 50 something whatever South Africa got bowled out and you know what at least you won like don't get me wrong it's a bad record to have but at least you got the win because if you didn't win it would have been a lot it would have been worse <laughs> thank you Virat 153 for 4 153 for 10 yeah, uh, that's and I think that was just Coley at the other end seeing all of his teammates throw their wicket away and he's just thinking, lads, go with me here. I'm trying to make some fucking runs for the team. Go with me. It's always this man. Most times top scorer for India when the team is bowled out for under 200. Look at the great man Sonny G with 10, Coley 9 and Sachin with 9. And that's probably the three, I mean, I, I mean, it, this would be the three greatest Indian test players right here, wouldn't it? Like batsmen, Sunny, Sachin, and Colby, probably right? So it's probably a good record to be a part of, that one. Good group. I'm trying to think, who else would be another? Yeah, no, probably those three, eh? Um, the Burger versus King. <laughs> it's actually a good matchup. It's like, it just makes you wonder why it's only a two-match series, like... One all. It, this needed a decider. Um, anyways, shout out to the ICC for making these interesting schedules or whoever makes them. Shout out. Thank you, Dean Elgar. Hey, shout out to the great man, Dean Elgar. Um, one of South Africa's very, very finest with that stick in hand, especially against that red ball. And one of the better, like, offside games you'll see. I don't want to say ever, but maybe. Like, honestly, that man on the offside just creams it. Um, especially anything that's full, it's gone to the boundary. Virat is pure entertainer when it comes to test cricket. <laughs> the man is always, I don't know, creating memes. And you know that he loves test cricket as much as anyone. Like, that's his favorite format. He always it brings out his best work in test cricket. Whether it's emotion, memes, enjoyment, runs... Pajara and Rahane enjoying themselves. <laughs> Yo, they're just, yeah, because they're getting out these tweets about like, hey, you are you witnessing this, Jay Shah? Bring me back. It's actually funny how they like time their tweets as soon as these things happen. Like, I swear I see it on my timeline every time anything happens like that. 23 wickets in one day. Most wickets in one day of a test match was 25. Australia v England in the MCG, I assume, at 19.02. Bruv. Who was playing back then? Like, was even, was the man Donny B even playing then? I don't know. Fuck, 19.02. That's, that's quite a while away. Um, a long time ago. So, 25 wickets. I don't know what sort of shit tip they were playing on that day, but that's not great. And then... Another, you know, South Africa v India. That was, yeah. I mean, the pitch was interesting. Like, it wasn't even that bad. It was just, or well, maybe it was bad, but it, it was very interesting. Uh, Two-day test match, shush. Nobody will say a word about the pitch, please. <laughs> I mean, look, yeah, it's interesting. I, I'm, as you got, if you're a, an avid listener or watcher of this channel, you know that I don't really give a shit about bad pitches or, or anything like that, unless it's an absolute flat dump and it's like, okay, this is getting ridiculous now. Or if it's like a, you know, a pitch where no one can play and it's uneven. But other than that, I don't really care. Like, it's all just the challenge of cricket. Like, yeah, because everyone's had to do it. Like, that's, yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. What if 20 wickets fell on day one in India? I mean, look... Yeah, it would have been news headlines everywhere, that's for sure. Um, Fox Cricket would have would have put out a few articles and said, um, you know, should we be playing here or um, should we move the test match to Zimbabwe? I don't know. Like, <laughs> that's Fox Cricket, man. When one hates you more than the other, name a better toxic relationship than me and India team. I'll wait. Yeah, I mean, it's not great. Like, it wasn't a great collapse, was it? From both, 23 wickets in one day. Like, yeah, you've got to think to yourself. And it was funny seeing photos of, like, as soon as India got bowled out and collapsed, they put the camera straight onto that man, Dravid. <laughs> like, leave him alone. That's not his fault. <laughs> oh, Sachin, we got cricket in 24, begins with 23 wickets falling in a day. Unreal. Boarded a flight when South Africa was all out. And now that I'm home, the TV shows South Africa has lost three wickets. What did I miss? 
I don't- look, Saxon. You just have to watch it to believe it, I mean... This wouldn't have happened in Sachin's day. He would have pulled all the lads aside and said, you do that shit again, you're not playing for me. Um, that's just what cricket was like back then. You were allowed to be a little bit meaner, but... <laughs> oh, shout out to Sachin, man. I mean, that's just literally how it was. Like, it, you can't watch every single ball of the test match. You have Sometimes you just have priorities, you have things to do. I reckon everyone would have taken us, like, done something and then came back and seen what the score was and just, like, what the heck is going on? In history of 147 years and 2,500 test matches, today is the first ever time seven players with zero runs in one innings. Yeah, so Jice Wall, Ayer, Jadu, Bumrah, Siraj, Krishna, and Mikesh Kumar. So just... Look, write your name into the record book, fellas. That's, um, <laughs> the message is clear. Yeah, Tala. I mean, shit, maybe. Uh, me, when I get to know this test match will end today. <laughs> Yo, this is actually like generational meme of Rowett. <laughs> why is he so, why does he look so angry? <laughs> Come on, Rowett. I know it's not that upsetting. Do I have any coffee left? All right, I do. Hold on a minute. I'll edit this out. Yeah, don't worry. Won't see any of that. All right. Dean Elgar and Tristan Stubbs make a unique record. Presumably the first time that one player has been uh, dismissed twice in a day on test debut. Yes, yeah, Stubbs. On the same day that another player has been dismissed twice in their final um, test match on the same day. I mean... It's got to be the first time, right? Like, there's no way anything like that has happened ever again um, or before. So, I felt a little bit bad for Tristan Stubbs. Like, imagine making your test debut. You know, he does have a bit of expectation behind his name and he goes out there on that sort of pitch. Like, good luck, mate. Good luck making your debut on that sort of thing. What does the, the test hold? Uh, I can't speak English this morning. What does the future hold for Gil in test matches? 20 matches, 1,000 runs, a high score of 128, an average of 31, two tons, 450s. I mean, there's obviously a promising Red Bull career there. Um, there's, there has to be someone like knocking down the door to actually get rid of him. But when you're thinking of who, who you know, Jais Wall is amongst that, you know, opening with Rowett and then you've got Gill at three, you know, Jais Wall hasn't made that many runs as of recent. So, like, do you just put Gill back to opening and then, you know, do you bring Pajara back in at three? Probably not, but yeah, I don't know. There's definitely, like, do you want to throw the man Rudaraj Gaikwad in there? I don't know. I know there's some other test, you know, young test cricketers that are probably ready for the opportunity. The great man Safaraz, get him up the order. <laughs> get him in there, Rinku. Come on. Uh, Sri Lanka's first series squad against Zimbabwe after their ban has been uplifted. It's good to see the great man Kusal Mendes will be the skipper. A vi oh, the man himself, Avishka Fernando, one of my all-time, well, not no, definitely not all-time, but modern-day favourite Sri Lankan players. He would be up there. He's an exciting hitter. He either, he either makes 70 off 10 somehow, or he goes out for zero off six. It's just... The, the way he plays, so that's cool. Uh, Summer Wickarama, this fella, Fernando, Shanika, Thikshana, Madushanka, Chamira, Walalagi, that's good. Madushan um, and Hasa Runga, subject to fitness. So, I mean, is that man Hasa Runga ever fit? Good Lord. you got to get fit, mate. I mean, if you, you want to get paid millions of dollars to play cricket in the IPL at least, you need to be fit. Uh... Yeah, I, I mean, I suppose that's what you'd probably do. MS Dhoni and Rishabh Mita. Bro, I swear they're always together. This is such a cool shirt. This is like one of those um, designs that like, that's kind of cool. It looks like, like a homemade sort of design. That's really cool. I swear they're always, damn, this man Dhoni looking like Thor. What's going on? I reckon he's got more muscle than the man's ever had in his career. <laughs> um... Agree with this team, the re retired 11 of 2023. So we've got Quinton de Kock, uh, David Warner, Alex Hales, 
Okay, we're in, no, that's all right. We're including the women. That's good. Uh, Dane Van Neerkirk, Meg Lanning, of course, Moen Ali, Ahmad Wasim. Oh, Lord. Dwayne Pretorius, David Willer, uh, Shabnim Ismail. I know she's an, she's a legend. And then Stuart Broad. Ugh, that's rough. Um, oh, who else? I'm trying to think of all who retired. Um, yeah, so David Warner's in there. Who else? I know Aaron Finch retired this year. Or, or, or that. Oh, that's not international cricket, though, was it? Um, I think that was the year before. I can't remember. Um, I mean, Aaron Finch, he's not good enough for this 11. I'd probably take out Hales and put him in there just for the enjoyment. Um, but, yeah, it's probably, it's probably spot on. I can't think of any other players that retired, so that's probably why. <laughs> Down to earth, man, Arsh D. Just chilling on the floor. It is good. For, I mean, you can't lay down on these chairs because um, there's no room, but I respect it. The great man, Arch Deep, he's just dreaming about blowing, um, uh, uh, what's his name, Barbar's front pad off in the T20 World Cup. Who remembers that dismissal when Arch Deep just bowled down an absolute thunderbolt and knocked off Barbar's front pad? That that was top, like, top 10 moments of all time. <laughs> Broadbeat like, come play a test match. David Warner picks Dale Stain as the toughest he's faced. I mean, look, you know, I think Dale Stain, I think that's a fair point, but the, the, obviously the bowler who got rid of him the most was Stuart Broad, but that was because, like, Broad would be ball tampering all the time in England, so that's why, okay? Um, no. I mean, he, he did have his measure. I think he got him out, like, 15 times or something ridiculous. Yeah. Since 2017, Cummins has taken 250 wickets, whereas Hazelwood has taken 129, almost double the wickets. Before 2017, damn, and it's just like that, that is an incredible stat because it shows how much work Cummins has done on his body to stay fit when the man for like five, six, seven years couldn't get on the park at all and could not stay fit for more than 10 overs. Now he's putting together one of the all time great fast bowling careers of all time, like not even just Australian, but absolute gun um is pat cummins the greatest cricketer produced by australia all righty hold on hold on michael vaughan hold on all righty let's hold on i saw a bit of dk lily on screen but i think pat cummins in time okay that's been okay don't think he's ever going to surpass sir donald but i think cummins is going to end up being australia's great at cricketer after don oh i mean i'm trying to think like what you know him yeah, Ricky Ponting obviously comes to mind as one of the very, you know, top guys. Shane Warne, I mean, look, I guess it depends like what you go off. Do you do you base it off impact? Is it based off every single stat? Like, I mean, based off stats, no one will ever beat Don Bradman, but you just got to think how much cricket has gotten so much better and stronger over the years. So, like, I mean, Camo would be up there. You know, Alan Border is probably up there. I'm thinking of, you know, the War Brothers were up there. You know, Gilly was up there. Just on pure amount of runs, like, yeah. Hmm. Inter it's an interesting debate. Like, Moses on Reeks would have to be up there. So, like, there's plenty of names we can throw around. So, that's fair enough. 20 wickets fall on a single day on a center pitch. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Gorgeous. And then 20 plus wickets fall on a single day on an India slash Asia pitch. You fucking donkey. <laughs> It's actually true how the narrative changes so much. I think what it is, is that, um, I mean, it's yeah, people, I think because pitches in Asia will turn a lot more. And I think a lot, a lot more people probably just enjoy watching pace bowling, which, you know, can be different, obviously, to, to watching 10 overs of back-to-back -back spinners just going to work. It's, I guess it's kind of what you enjoy watching more, like spinners or pace bowlers, because... Um, yeah, probably me. I, I, I probably do say the pace bowlers and when it's swinging everywhere and doing a bit of that. But that's just like the challenge of going to Asia. Well, not Pakistan because they just produce highways, but at least India or Sri Lanka, it's going to turn, it's going to spin an absolute mile. And that's the challenge. Like Australia, it's going to, it's going to fucking seam everywhere. It's going to bounce, you know, it's just the challenge. My resume, not bad. And then my skills. I mean, still not bad, but definitely not as good, not as good on that. Good. Wait, hold on a minute. Zimbabwe, Sri Lanka, Zimbabwe, the West Indies. 
Oh lord, get this man away. Stop it. <laughs> Hold on, we're not comparing that. Because look at Siraj. West Indies, which, you know, whatever. Australia, England, England, and England. All of those in England uh, against England is pretty impressive too. We got the Sam Hain apology form. Of course, if you are a Big Bash uh, watcher, it's okay if you're not, I, I understand. But Sam Hain from England. How much merit do you give to that? But to Sam Hain, reason for behavior. Honeyball conceived me. He was washed. That does happen. I don't watch actual games. I miss Darren Sammy. Psh, Hurricanes legend, Darren Sammy. I was jealous of Matt Short. And Mercury was in Retrogate. What does that even mean? Um, I will hereby respect Sam Hain and I will not talk down on future first ballot Hall of Famer. No, the only first ballot Hall of Fame this man's gone into is uh, just being another interesting pickup from a big bash club. I was going to say something else, but I'll probably hold that back. Um, what a spell by Boom Boom. You got the three, three five wicket hauls in South Africa, two fifers in England, two fifers in the Windies, one in Oz, and then one in home, which, I mean, having even a fifer on home deck is pretty good. He's the greatest ever in the modern era. Debate? I might have to put up a community poll um, and say who's like the modern day goat, like him, Camo, you know, maybe Stark, is he amongst it? Like guys like, is Rabada? Maybe that's too early, but there's plenty of, like, we're so blessed for fast bowlers, like, in this generation as well. Overseas saviour of Team India. Fifers at home, Fifers at away matches, yeah. I mean, when the conditions finally suit the great man, like, imagine, imagine if India produced pitches that favoured Siraj and Bumrah and Shami. Like, I think they would be almost just as unstoppable as they are on spinning decks, like, I know it would help out the opposition a bit more as well, but yeah, like just helping out guys like Boomer, like he could dead set take a 10 for if he, if possible. Uh, the lone warrior in Markram, South Africa all out on 176 thanks to Markram Century. Uh, yeah, I mean, just like, it was, a, it was a very good knock. I think it was only off 90 something uh, rocks as well, wasn't it? But yeah. Um, yeah, it's good to see the man actually put some runs on the board. I just feel like he's such an inconsistent player. Um, only player to score 50 in Centurion. Yeah, that's the only player to score 50 plus. That is, yeah, that, that sums it up, doesn't it? And I mean, like, I don't, I don't mind watching test cricket that goes like that. Like, I don't mind that every now and then, but you would like to at least get three, three and a half days. It happens, doesn't it? The Sachin Tendulkar day, a fourth of the first, um, 169 v, v South Africa in Cape Town, and then 241 not out against the Aussies in 2004 in Sydney, and then in Sydney again, 154 not out, 2008. Three years later, he goes back to Cape Town and says, get this up, ya, 146. Don't mind that at all. Yeah, and that's why, yeah, just, just the god of cricket, isn't he? The goat, at least Red Bull cricket, like what a man. Uh, that uh, no, and White Bull cricket. That that's crazy. I'm trying to, yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, that roar by Rowett after the W. So good to see him like this after that heartbreaking World Cup final loss. And hey, that's what it does. Like you know, I know the fans and I know the team would have needed some downtime to just reset, get into the new year, put you know, not put it all behind you and forget it because that's you know the lessons that you learn and humble and just work, makes you want it hungrier for success even more but yeah that was good to see by the man row it first asian captain to win a test match in cape town really has no one else won there jesus and that is crazy second indian captain to draw a series in south africa me seeing him happy after the world cup final yeah he got, he got good good intent as well in that second innings um, that's what he, I think he, maybe he can take that new sort of role in test cricket. Like I know he always is kind of that big hitter, but I don't, I think maybe when Rowett tries to play like an, a normal test innings, if you will, and settle in now, I don't think that's his go. Like, I think he should kind of be like a, a Travis head that, that opens, if you will, like, um, just go out there and play his normal T20 ODI game and try and get, you know, a quick 75 or, or so. T20 
Team India ended the South Africa tour undefeated. Oh, the series result. I was about to say, I think they lost the game, but yeah, no, 1-1, 2-1, and then 1-1. That's a, You'd probably take that if you're an Indian fan. Before the tour, you would have said, we don't lose a single series. I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that. Um, shout out to the man Surya as well. Shout out to him. Only the second time India has drawn the test series in South Africa. MS Dhoni won one in 2010. And now Rohit Sharma. Okay. The influence right there. <laughs> the two test, uh, test match series ended inside five days. Yeah, this is not much to be said about it, is there? There's not much to be said. The shortest test match. The test match lasted 107 overs only. The lowest in test cricket history. 642 deliveries bowled. That is the least ever. And then you had Australia v South Africa 1932 and then the Windies v England at Bridgetown in 1935. And you know the reason that these games were so quick back in the day is because the pitch was so shit. Like, no doubt, that's just my guess, right? But you could imagine, 1932, I don't imagine there's curators back then that are looking after the pitch because I, I just, that's... It wasn't happening back then, was it? They just walked out there on some fucking grass and, and played a bit of cricket. So that's that's no surprise. But when it's happening nowadays, that is why it is genuinely like it just shouldn't be happening as well. Um, but is it that bowling is getting better or is batting getting worse? Or are pitches getting worse? Aggressive statement? Oh, no. What's going on? Uh, well said, Rowett. A very brave statement. I don't mind playing on pitches like Cape Town as long as everyone keeps their mouth shut. Oh, Lord. In India and stop complaining about the pitches. We come to centre to challenge ourselves and when they come to India, they should be challenged. I agree. <laughs> I've never not agreed. So, well said. Very well said. I agree. That's just the challenge of going all around the world. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, no, agreed. Um, Team India gave a signed jersey to Algar after his retirement. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, wouldn't it be nice, though, if they could get a jersey without the Dream 11 sponsor on it? <laughs> Come on. Can't we put the sponsors to the side for one second? Dean Algar, he wants to hang this in his house. He doesn't want to see the fucking Dream 11 logo. Hey, nah, that is nice. I do love that stuff right there. Coley and Rowett leading from the front. This man, Coley, is a character. <laughs> what is going on? This is like this is like that photo when you see like boxers doing that pre-match, you know, fight stance between each other, like the face-off. That's what this man, Coley, is doing right here. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, shout out to Coley. He's just giving Dean Algar a memorable uh, send-off photo. Uh, me today when I finally see ICT win something, which is not a pan masala, white ball bilateral match, and something which everyone gives a shit about. <laughs> oh, isn't, isn't that um, Luis Diaz's dad? Gee whiz, that's... Um... <laughs> Uh, where is the decider? Uh, two match test series. This is what I'm saying, Ravi. I'm glad that we're on the same path, um, wavelength, because it's just ridiculous. Like, how the fuck are we going to play two test matches and then just give it up? Like, come on. Like, really? We need a result. What's the point? We don't play to draw. We play to win series of cricket, right? Um, it's like an exhibition series. Took some nice inspiration from Lord Temba. Scored centuries and team won the test match. Took fifers, tenfers and team won the test match. All-rounder performance in batting, bowling, fielding and the team won. Jadu, zero runs, zero wickets, zero balls bowled, zero runouts and team won the test match. <laughs> the man missed the first test match, comes in for the second one just to literally stand and sit on the bench and enjoy. So... Good on him. You know what? He gets a nice little match payment for not doing a single thing. And now that is finesse. And that is what I love about Jadu for that one. He, you know, he's like, I'll save it. I'll save it for when it matters. I'll save it for when we're playing Australia so I can 
destroy all their hopes and dreams again. Um, probably. The current crop of SA bowling. Yeah, and they still have Anrik Nokia um, in the wings, which is a fair effort. Like, it's crazy where Janssen came out of nowhere within the last two and a half, three years. Coatsy kind of out of nowhere in the last two, three years, but really had the big breakout at the World Cup this year. Janssen had an amazing World Cup. Rabat has always been class. Engedi's good. Um, Nokia obviously bowls heat. And then you've got the Maharaja Mac, the cheeseburger, Nondre Burger, um, the Fisho Filet, I think, is that what it's called? Again, I'll edit that out, but they just get all these tall quicks out of nowhere. Um, they just produce them, South Africa, as that man Dale Stane would know about something about fast. That smile, the best thing about time is it changes. Hey, that's what you love to see, man. Cricket goes on. Is Prashid still undercooked for Red Bull cricket? Uh, bowling one good length delivery on seam friendly deck. Prasim. <laughs> I mean, look, it was good to get some more experience under his belt and get him more, you know, match fitness. But yeah, I just, there's, I think there's better options in, in Indian cricket, right? Like, I'm going to say it again. Where the fuck's Umran Malik? Where is Umran Malik? Is he injured? I don't know. If he's not, I want him in there. I want him playing. I don't care. Like, I mean, shit. If there's no other options, then, you know, um, just make it exciting as well. Like, you know, sh no sham God. So you've got, you need that extra quick. Um, I could be biased, but boom over Camo. In the era of Pat Cummins, I choose Boomra. I mean, look, as an Aussie, I'm going to, I don't know. I, I sit on the fence, but I lean towards Patrick Cummins because he is my captain and look, I'm not going to repeat what he did in 2023, but he made me feel good inside and I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. Uh, Mahi and Rishab off to vacations? Yo, I swear they're always on the plane. <laughs> this man Rishab lives with Dhoni. <laughs> That's nice. Dhoni has adopted Rishab. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, bro. What's going on? Oh man, so inspirational. But that's like, that's like the best influence. Like you're thinking if there was someone who could take Rishab under their wing and guide them through their rehab, through their, you know, tough mental days of being a cricketer and rehabbing, there's no one better than that man Dhoni to just influence him and keep him on the right path. Like, you know, two, obviously, you know, one of the greatest keepers of all time, you know, mentoring one of the great upcoming keepers, like, you know, so good. It's like what you love to see that. Um, if you had to pick one test bowler, who would it be? I'm going to have to take my captain. I'm sorry. You know, it might be subjective of where you live, but I've got to take my man, Patrick Sir, Pol solar panel Pat. All right. Um, thank God now Carey won't be able to use this as DRS. ICC has announced that court behind won't be checked now if a wicketkeeper appeals for a stumping, um, which it probably makes sense. I mean, that's what the rule is designed there for. You should have to tell the umpire what you're reviewing, not just we're going upstairs, like going upstairs for what? Tell us what you're reviewing and we'll review that. Not everything. <laughs> like they do that all the time. And you see it happen where teams will review for court behind, but then they find out it's flicked them on the pad and they go out LBW. It's like, they didn't even fucking appeal for that. They wanted court behind. <laughs> oh, the grit and passion. Jesus, what is going on with his baggy green? Dean Elgar is using the same cap as his test to boo. Oh my God. This thing is hanging on for dear life. <laughs> It's actually a fair effort that it's still kicking. A lot of players usually get like one to two replacements, but thank you, Finchy. Yeah, Will, uh, Aaron Finch has announced that this season of BBR will be his last. He played a part of the Renegades first match and has played every season since. And, you know, it, this guy, like Finchy, like internationally, what he did for the white ball cricket scene of Australia was second to none. Like, um, I know for my generation, at least, like early days, it was obviously Gilly, Matty Hayden, Bevan, Ponting as well. Like a lot of those early day guys as well. But 
you know, for this generation of cricketers and when I was growing up and seeing Finchy early days for Victoria, the Bush Rangers they were called back then, um, and to where he is now, to have one of the great white ball Australian careers, um, like internationally, but even in the Big Bash was such a pioneer for people even turning on the screens and watching the sport and uh, um, one of my all-time faves, that's for damn sure. So shout out to Finchy, absolute legend. And just go enjoy yourself. He's going to obviously be a commentator now. He loves commentating. I swear, every time I turn on a cricket game in Australia, that is, Finchie's commentary is on. So it's, it is good. I like it. He's one of the few good ones who uh, will be a good transitioner into commentary, that is. Um, you got to feel for the fans. Newland Stadium staff, after selling all the five-day tickets and making a track that makes a test match in 1.5 days, <laughs> that ends in 1.5. Yo, the absolute finesse. If you bought tickets for day five, I don't know what to tell you. You probably should have gotten a look at the pitch. <laughs> Both happened in January. The Fortress Gabba, the Fortress Cape Town. God, oh yeah, this was tough. This was a tough one. That was tough. <laughs> that was tough, man. Uh, should ICC deep dive into this? I think we're getting mixed up with the line between not perfect light and dangerous light. There's no way it's dangerous out there. Oh man. I mean, we just have to stop being pussies or like, what are we, what, what, what the fuck's going on? Like, are we, are we being dead set? Don't be a pussy and get out there. All right. Like, the lights were on, like, I understand the ball's a bit red, you know, it can make it a bit difficult, but unless the batsmen or the fielders are complaining to bring off, then maybe bring them off if they think it's dangerous. But, like, mate, there is no fucking way that was dangerous. Took away so much of the day's play, and that is Sydney for you in a nutshell. And then the Pakistan slip catching. Yeah, Saeem Ab Ayub, I think his name is, on debut, not having a good day. Not having a good test match. He's gone out for a duck and then dropped an absolute sitter. Agar Salman's toilet break? What? I was off the field for a pee? Just for two overs? Probably seven or eight deliveries, actually. I was off for Saheed's over, and when I came back, one ball of the Jamal over had been bowled. I was sitting next to the subs bench, and I saw the video, and I knew that I was in trouble. <laughs> Oh, at least it wasn't Abdullah Shafiq. Yes, he would have. He would have dropped it as well. So, what a story of this man! Uh, what a great story Amir Jamal is. Came to Sydney some eight years ago with nothing but passion to play cricket, and here he is walking off on his first day of Test cricket in Sydney with the SCG crowd clapping him off and teammates at their feet. The fact that he moved to Sydney eight years ago, like. Is there any chance that he has Australian citizenship and we can steal him and make him into an Australian player? I don't know. I was impressed of what I seen. He bowls well. He can clearly bat well. I mean, he smacked a reverse sweep for six and the man bats at number nine. I couldn't believe it. Thought it was Glenn Maxwell. Uh, why? My dreams? Damn, this series, huh? That was it's a fair effort. And then my efforts, Bobsy. Damn. <laughs> Oh, Bobsy, top scorer, 41 at the MCG. Uh, David, the batsman. David, the commentator. David is set to take on a new role as a commentator for the Border Gavaskar Trophy, scheduled for the end of this year. Well, near the end of this year. So, I I like it. I just hope he doesn't. Yeah, I just hope they don't. You know, make him the. You know the main commentator like you know i want to hear him with some special comments i don't want to hear him commentate every single ball because then i will get sick of him um that can happen <laughs> i hope he gives like good info though um on the players and what he really thinks though what has changed so 2011 you can see that he's a lot more compact and then you see you know today 13 years later look at that stance that front foot is completely out of the way Maybe that what that would help probably give him a lot more room to swing back and pull, but probably helps not go out to LBW as much. Um, obviously, he then takes a step towards middle stump um, as the ball is being bowled, but he's a lot more out, which kind of opens up the stumps, but gives him a lot more room to kind of whip it through the offside as well. So um, that's just, yeah, 
pure David Warner stuff right there. I hope Candace did teach him a few of those tricks. Uh, what if Australia does it? Imagine if Oz sends a B team to the Kiwis in March. This would be our team. Renshaw, Bancroft, Peter Hanscombe, McSweeney, Ollie Davies or Joel Davies. I'm unsure which one. Jimmy Pearson, McAndrew, Nisa, Tremaine. Good Lord. Um... Lance Morris, Boland, Murphy, and Fergus O'Neill. I love, I mean, I've been saying this for forever, but there should be constant A team tours or B team tours or whatever. Your second 11 for each country should be playing series across the world to get them international ready, you know, just against solid competition like India could make one of the strongest B teams of all time. Um, and so could Australia looking at this. I mean, I'd probably just take out McAndrew for, or even, you know, Tremaine for a Moses on Reeks. But then other than that, it's pretty good. Um, and Will Bukowski if he was fit, but yeah, you know, that's going, but they should be doing tours all the time. Like imagine India, AV, Australia, a three match test match tour. Like, you know what? I'm watching that <laughs> likely schedule for the T20 world cup group stages. India v. Ireland, 5th of June. India v. Pakistan, 9th of June. India v. the USA. That's going to be interesting. And then India v. Canada. Yeah, look, we might see some big runs. We might see lots of runs, of course. Some of the boundaries won't be that big either. It's going to be... It's going to be a very new World Cup with all the new countries in it. BCCI plans ahead. 30 players will be shortlisted. So obviously Rinku will probably be number one. Uh, BCCI will be monitor and select them on the basis of their IPL form. <sighs> please, whoever's out there listening, cricket gods, please let Rinku play the most amazing IPL season of all time and get him selected, not just in the squad, in that damn 11. I want to see Rinku Singh at the 2024 World Cup playing. Hitting sixes, smashing bowlers from fucking Canada and Oman and bloody Kazakhstan or whoever's playing. I want to see him smack them all. Can't wait for Pant 2.0 and Boom Boom in the BGT. Hey man, this is going to be big. This is going to be large. And we're going to be covering it, of course. But yeah, I tell you what, if India come to Australia for a third time and beat us on our home soil in Red Bull cricket. I'll be upset. I'll be more than upset, actually. It'll just be heartbreaking. Uh, Virat and... Hold on. Oh, no. What's my mouse doing? Yo, my mouse is tripping. Virat and Rowett will end their career without a Test Series win in South Africa. Um, this pair together for the first final time in Test Whites in South Africa. Wow. They won't tour the South Africas till 28, 29. So, wow, that is the last time if you were a South African fan, you will ever see them on your shores, which is it's a little bit sad, isn't it? But, hey, that's the new generation we're kind of moving into. These players are getting older. At least they got a good draw. You know, it's good that they didn't lose 2-0 to finish it off. Um, we've got our last one for the video. We will get a very, very clear clarity in the next three to four days ahead of the Afghanistan series. Virat and Rowett are keen to play the World Cup in June. They have to. Um, I don't, like, if I'm Team India, there is no fucking way, excuse my language, that I'm going into a T20 World Cup. A World Cup without Rowett Sharma opening up and Virat Kohli... What? He could open if he wanted, but put him at three, obviously. Three, four, doesn't matter. Put him at seven. No, obviously not. But, like, <laughs> there is no way you can't pick both of these fellas in your biggest games of the year. It has to be done. Even if the, even if Rowett had a really bad IPL, then you would start to think about it. But he's just that explosive. He's that good. He can take a game away from you in four fucking overs. Like... If I, I know if I'm Team Australia, I would, I'm would i scared of Rohit Sharma to play and, and Virat Kohli. So if they're not playing, that's a sigh of relief for other countries. But they will play 100%. Lock them in. There's no way they're going into a World Cup without those two legends. But hey, that will cap us off for Cricket Memes Episode 197. Uh, we're just going to figure it out. <laughs> 
Sorry, Barbar, mate. Nah, mate, that will cap us off. I hope we all enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see everyone in the next one.